I use SellerAmp and Keepa every single day for product research in my seven-figure Amazon business. In this video, I'm going to give you everything you need to know to start using them to find winning products this week. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Miles, aka Flips for Miles, and I help people like you build a side hustle or business of their dreams, flipping name brand products on Amazon. This Wednesday, March 6th, we're hosting a completely free live training, breaking down all the steps you need to know to get started with Amazon Online Arbitrage this week, as well as some specific sourcing software we don't share anywhere else for free. So make sure to get registered for the free training. Like I said, March 6th, 7 p.m. Eastern, down below. It's completely free. Let's get right into the Salary for Kiva Basics video. You can get a free trial of SellerAmp on our website, selleramp.com, and a Keepa subscription on Keepa's website. Both these tools are $20 per month, and they're going to be Chrome extensions that you're going to install on your Google Chrome browser to do Amazon Online Arbitrage product research. Taking a look inside my screen, we're going to start out talking about the basics of Keepa. So if we scroll down here, we can now see the Keepa charts. So basically, Keepa charts are stock charts for Amazon products. Keepa tracks data since a product was added to Amazon. So we can see this specific item was added 522 days ago. So we can literally see how this has performed the entire time it's been listed on Amazon. Now, I know this might look a little bit confusing if you're a beginner. As a beginner, you want to be focused primarily on the three-month data, so the past 90-day data. Now, I would recommend copying my selections in terms of these filters here. Third-party FBA is going to be these orange triangles. That's going to show what the lowest third-party seller that's selling through Amazon FBA is. The green line is going to be the sales rank, aka the demand, right? So we'll just take all these out here. So we can see the sales rank on this product is 800, which is really, really good, which means the entire listing, all the different colors and sizes, have a sales rank of 800. As a beginner, you primarily want to stay below a 150 or maybe 100,000 sales rank right there because you want to make sure you're buying products that are in demand. Third-party FBA is the orange triangles. These do not indicate sales, but what they do indicate is that new people are moving in and out, right? So that does indicate that the faster and the more orange triangles you see, the more a listing is selling. The lowest price right here, which is this purple line, this is the lowest price regardless of fulfillment type, so FBA or FBM. Not really going to worry about that super much. I would recommend having Amazon selected on this specific item. We can see Amazon was on this back in October here. However, they're not currently on it. I'm fine with competing with Amazon as long as I can see that other people are getting sales. Right? We can see the buy box line. This is primarily where you're going to be looking here. Taking a look at the pink line, which is the buy box, which is up here. That's the buy it now option. This is where we want to be as sellers. Right, so we can see the current buy box on this specific item is $45. We can also see it's an FBM seller here, which means this seller does not have their products at Amazon FBA's fulfillment centers. They are shipping the product directly to the customer, which typically makes sense around more seasonal opportunities. So we can see this specific item here, we can see the price is really nice and stable and it's actually trending up. So we want items where the price is either stable or going up and items where the competition is either stable or going down. The competition is this bottom chart here. We can see on this specific item here, on January 25th, there were 18 sellers, but currently there's only 11 sellers. And so we can see that's gone down and it's made the price subsequently go up here. So like I said, you want to focus on that three-month data and make sure that the price is either stable or going up, that the competition is either stable or going down. Another thing you want to avoid is listings where you see the competition and then just there's a massive cliff. That's what's called an IP complaint or an intellectual property complaint, which can provide issues with your account health. On Amazon, so you'll want to avoid listings like that, and you ultimately want to make sure you're buying products that are selling, which comes from taking a look at the sales rank, common sense around the color being a common color, blue, we can see it makes sense people would like that, and then oscillation on the offer count, the bottom chart on Keepa. I get the question all the time, how much competition is too much competition on a product? And truth be told, it's completely on a listing by listing basis. And it's not really about how many sellers a listing currently has. It's about the trend. So we can see this item specifically was nice and stable around 20 sellers and the price was nice and stable. Then the competition went down. The price subsequently went up here. However, recently the competition went from 13 on February 23rd all the way up to 40 sellers on February 28th. And it makes sense that the price completely went down. So there's some listings that are completely fine that have 100 sellers, and there's some listings that have 10 sellers that are not good because relative to volume and the trend of competition, it can provide issues here. So we can see this specific listing, 
the price went down as the competition went up, which completely makes sense based on supply, demand, economics. So it's not about how many sellers are on a specific product. It's all about the trend. And we can also see this specific listing didn't have a buy box for a while. However, we can see in the offer count that there was still movement down there and that that makes sense that sellers are selling out. So don't be afraid of listings that don't have a buy box. Other Keepa features that are also pretty helpful is going to be going here and hitting data and then hitting product details here. So we can actually go ahead and see the sales rank averages over time, the buy box averages over time and other helpful data in terms of analyzing this specific item here. I don't look at the product details a ton, but if you do want to see the averages on an item, it does make sense to do. Like I said, you want to focus on primarily that month long or 90 day data. And then over time, as you place bigger initial orders of product, you're going to scale up from there. I'm not a fan of this offers uh, tab data on Keepa. I do think it's interesting to see how long sellers have been on a listing to test if it's probably going to be a refund product. However, this sold last 30 days data is largely inaccurate. I would not recommend looking at that. Hitting the buy box statistics right here is another helpful part of Keepa. This basically lets us see who's getting the buy box, how often, and at what price. So if we take a look at the 90-day data right here, we can see this specific listing we know didn't have a buy box, so it makes sense that one seller's dominating it based on that it recently did get a buy box again. However, taking a look at the buy box statistics is also a great way to measure whether or not Amazon is dominating the buy box on something. Typically, the buy box is going to rotate to all the other sellers. We can see this specific item didn't have a buy box for a while. It just got the buy box back. So it makes sense that one seller's dominated for the past couple of days and past 30 days it has it. If we take a look at, yeah, the 180 or the 365 data. Now we can see this is clearly a reseller friendly product that people are making sales on. And we can back that up by taking a look at that nice oscillation on the off count that sales are getting nicely shared. So that's the basics of Keepa charts. We're going to take a look at SellerAmp, which is our product research tool, which is going to break down the exact net profit we're going to make on a product with shipping fees, product costs, et cetera, as well as find more products via storefront stock in. I'm going to start out taking a look at the settings right here on selleramp.com. So the big thing is going to be, this is pretty basic criteria. I do a minimum BSR percent uh, or maximum BSR percent of 1%, although typically I'm staying below 100, 150,000 for the most part, not a huge fan of those percents. A minimum profit of $3 per unit and a minimum ROI of 30%. Definitely want to set that minimum ROI a little bit higher depending on um, the return criteria of a specific product. Uh, in terms of like, if it's a grocery product, you can totally go 25% ROI because people don't really return that. But women's shoes, you probably want to go, you know, minimum 35% ROI plus cash back and such here. Now, prep fee is going to be if you're using a prep center. A misc fee is if you want to put a set per unit fee um, in terms of like your own prep and such. Miss fee percent is going to be your sales tax percent. So like a lot of you guys, it's going to be like 7.5. If you're in California, maybe 7.75, a little higher. Such and I recommend putting in an inbound shipping estimate of 40 cents per pound right here. So feel free to look up the sales tax rate in your specific state to find that out and nice and easy to get those situated in the seller amp settings. I want to show you guys an example of a winning product and then actually how we're going to break it down within seller amp here. So we can see this Nike hoodie retails at 42 but is going on DTLR for only $19.98. Over on Amazon, we can see SellerAmp pops up right here. Right off the bat, we primarily want to take a look at the profit calculator. This is mainly where you're going to spend time in SellerAmp. So I just showed you guys the product research criteria I have in here. And now we can go ahead and plug in this buy cost here of $19.98 here. And we can see that leaves left over about $11 profit, a 23% profit margin, and a 50% return on investment. And we can see the listing sells really quick because it's a 20K rank. I also like taking a look at the dimensions here on SellerAmp so we can gauge the weight of a product. Then if we were going to go ahead and look for this item, we could hit the G button and Google this right here. Take a look at that. And then if we want to see all the data, we're going to take a look at here nicely laid out. We could also click that and take a look at the web app right here. Uh, I definitely use the Chrome extension the most though. So primarily, we're going to take a look at the prop calculator right here. This factors in shipping to Amazon, sales tax, Amazon fees, and product costs. So the cool thing is you can just pull the price it shows on the website and plug that in. The offer summary. So a lot of people don't know that you can actually customize where your seller amp tiles show. So I like having the offer summary here so I can see if a listing is merchant fulfilled friendly here. The ranks and prices breaks down some of the averages over the 30, 
90, 180, and all time data on a specific product. So we can see on the 90 day data, it makes sense that the sales rank on this product was a little bit lower here because it's winter and it makes sense that hoodies would be going up and uh, going down in demand a little bit right now. So it makes sense that back in December, the sales rank on this product was 3,000 and now it's like 20,000. And then during the summer here, it gets up in the 80 to 100,000 range as well. The alerts right here, this is pretty important as well. So we can see Amazon hasn't shared any of the buy box. Like I said, some sellers avoid listings where Amazon's in the buy box. Private label, this is really important. If you see the private label alert on Selleramp, typically it's not actually a private label listing. It's just that the listing has low competition. So if you do see the private label alert, you wanna take a look and see if that item is being dominated by the brand. So if it says like uh, the items like called 123 brand and it shows sold by 123 brand and you check the buy box statistics on Keepa and 123 brand is getting the majority of the sales, that's gonna be an actual private label listing or if they're the only seller. Right, your standard size, nice and simple. We can see variations. This listing has a ton of different variations, but if we take a look at the Keepa, we can see this is a fast moving variation being that we can see nice oscillation there. We can also see a mini version of the Keepa chart right here on Selleramp as well. So if you're doing retail arbitrage, you can take a look at the Selleramp mobile app and see the Keepa chart there, which is really, really helpful as well. We can take a look at the month long, three month long, year long data, like I said, I'm primarily using that um, on the retail arbitrage feature on the mobile app because if I'm doing OA, I have the Keepa extension pulled up here too. The Prof Calculator, this lets you see an exact fee breakdown here for FBA. And also if we wanna do FBM, so for example, this product it says it weighs one pound. It's a hoodie, it probably weighs more like 14 ounces occasionally can be incorrect. So say we wanted to FBM this product right here, would probably pay about six bucks for FBM shipping so we can see pretty similar FBA and FBM are largely very similar costs here. We can see slightly different fee breakdown too. And we can also do the quantity filter, go here, put in 10 of these guys, say we wanted to buy 19, we would make $203 in profit, which is awesome. The variations feature is in beta, so you can see the performance of the different variations and such and a breakdown of them as well right here. You can add notes to different ASINs, which is cool too. I don't really use this feature a ton. Discounts, I kind of just do mental math within selling up. Like the cool thing is you can say you wanted to take 10% off, you go ahead and multiply this by 0.10 and you see you can do math in selling up. Say you wanted to, you know, divide it by five units right there, multiply it by 20%, add 20% to the cost, etc. You can do math in selling up, which is nice right there. And then we can see the Google Sheets feature. This is another feature I really like for staying organized with your leads. Say you found a lead that was almost good. You could one click export this out to an almost good spreadsheet here and that data automatically populates, right? So say we needed this to be like, need another 10% off right here, right? So I'd recommend de getting definitely like an almost good, an out of stock sheet, a back to school sheet, a Q4 sheet, and you can set that all up on selleramp.com. Now, the main feature I use Selleramp with on top of the profit calculator is gonna be the storefront stalking feature, otherwise known as reverse sourcing. Most beginners think that the best way to find products as a beginner is to go on random websites and look through the clearance section. What I think makes a lot more sense to do is to take a look at what other sellers are selling and then go track those listings down properly. So what we do there is we can take a look at the offers here and open up any sellers that have 50 plus reviews, right? So we know that they're making money here. So we can take a look and open up these sellers. And now what we're going to be able to do is take a look inside their catalogs and see all the specific products that these sellers carry right here, right? So we can see all the listings that these sellers carry, 1K rank, 4K rank, 3K rank, et cetera, right here. And we can see all the different products that they're carrying, as well as the specific brands that they're carrying, right? And the specific categories that they're carrying. And we can filter into those specific ones. So say we want to take a look primarily at Nike items. We could filter into this seller's Nike items and then go through and qualify the best performing sales ranks of these products in here. So we can see exactly all the different stuff these sellers are carrying and dial in in terms of tracking these specific items down properly. And such here, so we can see 4K rank, we can take a look at that, right? 3K rank, totally take a look at that, right? 53K rank, that looks good, right? So the cool thing is you can really quickly find tons of reseller friendly SKUs here to go ahead and actually take a look at here, guys, right? So we can see, open up all these different listings, you could filter into like Adidas products specifically too, Right, and now we can instantly see a bunch of listings that we know are selling good. So when I see a listing like this that I know has lots of different variations here, different colors and sizes, what I'll do is I'll go down here and hit variations on Keepa and go ahead and I recommend customizing your column similar to mine here. And now I can go ahead and see all the fastest selling variations by filtering by review count. 
right now it makes sense that these would be selling well being that they have 400 views i can see really nice oscillation in this off account where you want to move your columns around to match mine so i recommend pausing this video going ahead and doing that where so i like filtering top to bottom this is a weird listing where we can see tons of different ones um, tons of different colors and such we're here but i want to take the time to google any of these that i can see nice quickly move via the off account right now we'll go ahead and plug these in on google it's like these white ones here 94 for something to be profitable, you typically need to pay about half of what uh, you can sell it for on Amazon. The cool thing is, selling is going to show us that max cost right here. So this is buy box in at 98, right? So we want to pick this up at 55. So let's go ahead or less, right? And go ahead and plug this in. So we can see this specific item here is actually at 56 right here. So we're pretty close. However, this is a women's shoe, right? So let's take a look at the numbers here. So let's see. Ah, and they only have a couple size right here, but 56, 56, 99 here. Right, we can see that's pretty close. I also love using what's called discounted gift cards as well here. So I'm gonna plug in on Shields and see. So yeah, on Shields specifically here, we can get another 4.5% off, right? So if we go ahead and multiply this in here, right, we can take off about 4.5%, right? So we'll take off like 0.95 right about, right? So we can see now this becomes decently close right here. Now this listing is currently out of stock on Shields, Right, but we can see there's been times when it's been buy box and closer to like 120, 105 and such, right? So if it gets back up there, right, that becomes a good item. So what I'm going to do on this listing is I'm going to go ahead and add this to an out of stock spreadsheet on seller amp here, right? And discounted gift cards are a really good resource along with coupon codes. I have other videos that break down how to use those, right? But we can see, look through all these different seller storefronts, we can see tons of examples of fast selling reseller friendly products pretty quick, right? So these three inch shorts. Let's head to variations and let's see what we can do. So we can see, yeah, these uh, black extra smalls and navy ones are pretty expensive here, honestly. We can see black extra small 47 here, right? So let's plug this in, see if we can track these down profitable anywhere, right? So these, yeah, max cost immediately 27, right? So let's see, can we track these guys down anywhere? Okay, I don't think any of these are the right thing, unfortunately. Let's see, I did see that other color, which is showing on Google here. So let's see, yeah, like this 46 is showing on Google here. Let's see, and it's an FBM buy box, so I know I could probably price above that as an FBA seller right here. So let's see, max cost 26.55, yep. Right here, let's go ahead and plug this in here. Let's see, okay, yeah, so now, right, we can see, we can pick these up for about 30 bucks, right? And we can see, we wanna be able to discount this, right? Because is there any discount on Nike.com currently? Yeah, so Nike.com, they have discount codes, it shows right there, but Dick's Sporting Goods here, we can see, is right here, yeah, so at 30 bucks, and then I know I can go ahead and scroll down here just based off of experience and actually get another 10% off, right? So that takes this from $30, right? We can multiply and take off 10%. We just use what's called a catch-all email via Namecheap to get that situated here, right? And then we're also gonna go ahead and check Car Bear here to see if we can get a further discount with Dick's Sporting Goods. So we can see, yeah, so we can see there's a bunch of opportunities to get like another seven, eight, nine, 10, maybe even higher percent off Right, so say we get off 8% on this specific item, right? So let's multiply by 9.92. Right now, we can see this item is $10 profit and a 40% ROI. And Dick Sporting Goods has a rewards program, and we're going to get some credit card cash back on that too. And now what we just need to do is make sure that this listing has been stable over time. So we can see if we go here and hit data and then buy box stats and take a look at the past month here, right? We can see that the vast majority of the time, right, we're hanging out here, you know, in the... 42, 43, 45 range, right? So if we take a look and go here at 45, right, we're still making $9 profit here. And this listing is FBM friendly looking here. So I could sell this FBA or FBM. If I were to FBA it, I could see that the current buy box was 46 FBM. I would definitely list this closer to like 49 as an FBA seller because Amazon pushes that in the buy box specifically more. So that's literally the name of the game, guys, right? It's going ahead and taking a look at, okay, what are other people carrying? Right. And then can I go ahead and find it profit? Like these guys here at 40, right? We want to go ahead and multiply or plug this in on Google, see if we can find these anywhere. Same thing with all these listings, right? So you can watch some of my other videos and find other winning products. I found the go ahead and storefront stock off those, as well as taking the seller amp mobile app into your local Nike outlet, grocery outlet, et cetera, to find other winning products from there. So that's the basics of seller amp and keep up. Hope this video was helpful for you guys. Check out my full ungating tour right here and my full free course right here for the full blueprint to start Amazon online arbitrage this week. Let me know any questions down below. Make sure to subscribe for more and I'll see you guys in the next one.